Greetings everyone. In this video we're going to take a look at function synthesis with our op amps. So what is a function synthesizer? Essentially what we're going to do is alter the input output characteristic so that it's non-linear. We can either get increasing or decreasing gain characteristics. This allows us to uh, basically do two big things. One is to force a wave into a different shape, and the other is used to correct for nonlinearities in a sensor. So there's a couple ways of doing this, and we're going to look at a fairly straightforward way right here. Um, this particular circuit is based on an inverting amplifier. So I want you to look at R2 over here. This is your feedback resistor, RF. And R1, of course, is the RI, the input resistor. And let's just ignore these diodes and so forth up here. All right, so that by itself, this is just an amplifier with a gain of 3, right? 30K over 10K. So gain of 3, and it is inverting. Now, we have this extra sort of rung on the ladder up here, which consists of a 15K resistor and a couple of back-to-back -back Zener diodes. These happen to be 6.8 volt zeners, but you could put other values in here. Now, here's the way this is going to work. As the input signal rises, at some point, these diodes are going to become active, and they will create another shunting path for current, and that will change the effective value of RF for the whole circuit. So it fairly low voltages. You know, you put in a, a volt or two or three, something like that. Um, the signal will not be large enough to turn on these zeners. So these are just off. All right, this is a high impedance path that doesn't exist. In other words, all we have is this gain of three that we were initially talking about. But as the signal rises, eventually we're going to activate one of these zeners. Now because they're back to back like this, this is going to be symmetrical. In other words, it's going to behave the same way for both positive and negative inputs. All right. So what's going to end up happening is one of these zeners will start to conduct. Right. The other zener will be in forward uh, bias mode. In other words, we'll get our you know usual forward um, uh, uh, diode potential that we would see, right? You know, six or seven tenths of a volt. Now at that point, right, current starts flowing through here and this R3 sort of jumps into the mix and this winds up essentially being in parallel with the R2. If this R3 wasn't here and we just had these two diodes, what would end up happening is we would simply lock the output. We would create a clipping circuit. It would clip at a little over seven volts. Because remember, this is your virtual ground, and this point is your output. So the voltage across R2 is the output voltage. It's just, it's just flipped, okay? But it's the same magnitude. So if we just had the zeners out here, this would just lock the output. In other words, as the input signal would rise, it would sort of clip prematurely at a little over 7 volts. But with the addition of R3, this allows the current going through this path to create a voltage drop. And ultimately, what ends up happening, if the signal is big enough, R3 appears to be in parallel with R2. And in this case, you have 15 in parallel with 30K, which gives you 10K. So you would have 10K for your effective RF over the 10K for R1, and that would give you a gain of 1. So the gain will have started off at 3 and then fallen to approximately one. So if you were to do a little plot here of the gain, right? So here's your input voltage, here's your output voltage. You would see this thing rising up, right? At a gain of three, and then you would hit this sort of breakover point somewhere in the seven volt region. And then it would drop to this slope of one, right? So you'd have a gain of three coming up like this, and then a gain of one. So this is going to distort the, the look, the shape of the waveform. Now this is easiest to see if we choose a triangle wave for the input because that's a nice straight line. So the variation in gain will show up as uh, you know, sort of a warping of that straight line on the triangle wave. All right, so we're going to do a little uh, transient analysis here. Now this is a 100 hertz, so I'm going to put in 20 milliseconds over here. This is going to give us two cycles of the waveform. 
Okay, let's go take a look at our legend. And we can see what's going on. So here's my input. Here's my nice 8 volt peak triangle wave. Okay. And then this maroon wave shape is the output waveform. So the first thing I want to direct your attention to is look at the angle on this. All right. What's the slope on this? So on the output, yes, it is inverted as expected, but it is steeper in this range, right? Because we do have a gain of three rather than a gain of one. But when we get up in this region, which is somewhere in the seven volt region, right, this thing starts to bend over. This is where the upper path is starting to come into play. And um, we can see that this is slowing down. As a matter of fact, this slope is close to, not identical, but close to the input slope, meaning the gain is about one. Now it's not going to be exactly one because ultimately you don't have just 15k in parallel with 30k, you actually have a little bit of voltage over here. And this creates some extra resistance, if you will. So you get sort of a, an eventual tendency to a gain of one in this case, but it's going to take a little while to get there. All right. Now the actual breakover point, like I said, would have to be somewhere in the, in the seven volt region. Um, and we can check that with our nice little cursor over here. So we get in this region right, where it's bending over. The diodes are just starting to come on, right? And now they're on full. So we can see yeah, it's somewhere right in that seven-ish volt range is where we're starting to see that inflection in the curve. All right. Okay. Now, if you decided to add more rungs to this ladder, right? You say, oh, I'm going to put another set of zeners over here and another resistor. All right. You know, maybe I put in, um, you know, like an 8.2 volt zener pair and we have a 10K resistor here. What ends up happening? Well, at really low signals, again, this will be off. The new one will be off and all we'll see is the gain of three. We get up to the seven volt region. This comes on, but the new section will still be off. So we'll get, you know, this kind of gain, right? This tending toward a gain of one. Finally, if the input gets big enough, this new section will turn on, you know, eight volts and change, um, and that will place this new resistor. You know, if we had a 10K over there, we'd have 10 in parallel 15 and parallel 30, which would give us about 5K, and the gain will actually go fractional. You have 5K over 10K, a gain of one half. And what we would see up in this region is this thing starting to flatten out much sooner. So you'd come up steep, then sort of a middle slope, and then a very shallow slope, and then come back. Now, if you kept doing this, right, if we were very careful about uh, what we were choosing here and we had breakpoints all the way up, right, or on our input, however you want to look at this, we could get this thing to actually approximate a sine wave very nicely. Years ago, before we had direct uh, digital synthesis function generators in the lab, that was the typical way of generating a sine wave. You would create a circuit that could, cr that could um, generate a triangle and a square, and uh, we'll look at that in a upcoming vi uh, video. But uh, then we would take the triangle wave and we would run it through one of these wave shaping circuits and we could sort of derive a sine wave out of it. All right. Okay. The limitations on this particular circuit are the, the zeners themselves. You know, you can only get certain size zeners. You're kind of stuck with certain things. Um, it's a simple kind of circuit. And if you take this section, this idea, and you put it across R1, you can get an increasing gain rather than a decreasing gain, right? So instead of seeing that signal sort of droop, you would see the signal sort of take off, all right? Um, if you just pick this up and sort of put it across here. Um, but you still have this kind of limitation on, on uh, the zeners themselves. There is an, another way of doing this. You can use a, a, a biased diode bridge sort of configuration um, this is shown in the text. It's a little bit more involved, but it is a little bit more accurate as well in terms of uh, being able to manipulate it because you're not going to be stuck with Zener potentials. The uh, breakpoints will be dictated by um, basically a voltage divider, a couple of resistors. So you can play with those with much greater uh, accuracy and control the response very nicely. 
And you can also um, have independent breakpoints and gains for the positive as well as the negative. So you can get some pretty funky looking curves out of that if you're so inclined. But this does work. You know, it's, um, it is limited by the speed of the op amp, of course. Um, and it illustrates exactly how you can use the function synthesis. There you have it.